Good morning YouTube land and welcome to an updated version of getting a living ship in No Man's Sky video. A couple of things have changed in the last couple of years since I've last made one of these. So I just thought I'd made an updated one, slightly better, more step by step and showing more things. Of course you will need a void egg and to get one you will need to either buy one or have one. And you can buy one at the Quicksilver Synthesis Companion in the Space Anomaly. You just need 3200 Quicksilver and of course if you don't have enough you can always do missions on weekends especially you've got more Quicksilver available. But as soon as you do have enough you can just go to the companion, scroll down to the void egg and buy yourself one. It's actually nice and simple. Now at all points in this mission you can do everything if you use some of the shortcuts that I have. You can do everything in a couple of hours on the same day. So just make sure that the, the egg is in your inventory when you start off. So you get your egg, you jump in your ship and you want to pulse. You want to activate your pulse engine. What I found was I always at least jump once with the hyperdrive. Then you activate the pulse engine and you wait for an anomaly in essence. You know what those things anomaly detected? You jump out and you will see a living ship there. And of course, accept the conversation. This won't happen if you don't have your egg in your inventory. So if you're pulsing around for more than 15 to 20 seconds and nothing happens, just make sure all that is active. And like I said, just do a jump. If you say flee, it's not bad. You can just jump again and you will get it again. But just make sure that you accept. You always accept. Just always accept. That's always the easiest way. So after the first conversation, you will now need to navigate to other star systems. Now, do make sure that you do have the hyperdrive specific to go to other systems. In my case, I have all the hyperdrive, so it is not an issue. In this case, I landed on an uh, outlaw system. Outlaw systems are not too bad. It is easy enough. There's not a lot of sentinel activity. So, all you have to do is get your location and then navigate towards your first location. And basically the mission is starting. So what we need to do here is you have an approximate location, you land your ship, you jump out, you get your scanner ready, find your direction and away you go. When you're getting close to your location, you will uh, just continue scanning, basically getting the right direction. What you're looking for is basically a monolith. Looking for a monolith, and at the monolith, you will get missions. Now, what you do at the monolith, you just have a conversation, get your ship towards your location so long in the meantime, while you're having a chat. And it all depends on what system you're in, which is quite important. In my case, I'm in a Corvac system. So just have a chat with the monolith and accept the mission, basically. Now, what will happen is, in the first and the third step, you will require something that you don't have. But don't fret, you will get the recipe for what you have. So as you can see, I don't have a consciousness bridge yet. Just say leave. But don't be scared. When you say leave, you get the recipe for a consciousness bridge. So it's actually nice and easy. We need Hexite, Pugnium and a Corvax casing. Don't be alarmed regarding Hexite if you've never heard of it. It will the, the mission will give you a location to go and find Hexite. So all you have to do is just stick around and then look at your HUD. You will see that I require a Hexite there, 250. You require some Pugnium that you can get from killing Sentinels. Or you can get Pugnium from ships, basic, uh, Starship pilots in the space station, especially if you're in an outlaw system. So all you have to do is jump in your ship, find the location that you need to head towards. In my case, there it is, the Hexite source. Jump in, navigate towards that. It's usually a crashed freighter for the Hexite. So don't be alarmed, just follow the, follow the, the HUD guide, basically. Land at the freighter and grab your Hexite. Of course, you're free to grab any other resources when you're at freighters. There's usually a bunch of stuff you can do. But if your primary focus is living ship, then just grab the Hexite and uh, continue on with your mission.
Next in line we have the Pugnium. As I said, you can either attack Sentinels, that planet was sparse, so there was never any Sentinels around. I just gen headed to the space station. As mentioned before, I'm in an Outlaw one, which means there's almost every single time Pugnium at the normal resource guy, the black market guy. So just head to the black market guy, spend some cash on some Pugnium, nice and simple. And now we get to the slightly more tricky one, which is the Corvax casing. Now, Corvax casings can be gotten in two different ways. Well, the most reliable in two different ways. The one being, you can get them at Starship, so in space station, ship pilots sometimes have it. If you're in a Corvax system, the ship pilots sometimes have them. So all you have to do is just chat with all the space station uh, Starship pilots, basically, and see if they have any Corvax casings. If you don't, Get it with the pilots you can either go around to other space stations or the other option is to go to a planet if you have an economic scanner on your on your ship and then scan for a trading post if you have a trading post close by then you can always go to the trading post and have a chat with them as well regarding the starship pilots that is the the more reliable way to get yourself a callback casing now casing is quite expensive it's usually around 50 to 60 thousand credits so just make sure you've got some cash on you or things that you can sell <clears throat> as mentioned i headed to my trading post got to the trading post had a chat with one of the pilots not in the galactic trade terminal so don't go there it has to be one of the pilots and make sure that the pilots are corvax so, you know if they're not corvax a viking might give you a dagger and a gig might give you nips maybe who knows but uh yes speak to a corvax guy Offer to trade and there's your casing. Now for the first item you have all three ingredients. Go ahead and build your consciousness bridge, jump back in your ship and all you need to do is head back to the monolith where you got the original mission. Now of course you do have a an item to give to that monolith. There we go, we've received, we've, we've arrived at the monolith, having another chat with the monolith, and then you can now present him with the bridge. So what happens is you give, you build an item, you get a recipe, you build an item, you give the item to the monolith. The monolith thing gives you something alive, basically, but also something very fragile. In this case, a fragile neural stem. Now, the neural stem needs to grow which means it grows in real world hours. So if you look at it, you will see that I need to wait for 20, 22 hours and 30 minutes for this neural stem to grow. You can do two things. You can either wait in real world hours or you can adjust your time. So what I do is I save, I jump out of the ship, I go to my system, I change my time just one day in advance, jump back into the game. Always make sure multiplayer is off jump back in the game and then time has moved forward then you jump back in your ship go back to space and pulse again now you want to have a chat with another with this with the living ship the same living ship have a chat with them and we are now on our way to part two of the mission very similar to part one you have a conversation with the ship they're going to give you a location and then you sort of fall form the you follow the same steps you will need to build something you will then, while well, you get to a monolith, you will be asked for something. You won't have it. You'll get a recipe. You will then go to that location and bowl the recipe. Wait for it to grow up again. Again, by either waiting in real world time or actually adjusting your system. And then you will be able to repeat steps. One to four is all similar, except each time it's just a different recipe. So everything that you require regarding not common things is given to you either by a recipe or by a location all you have to do is basically just follow the steps and have and read the conversation that you have with the monoliths
this case our plan is to get a solar ray again just build the solar ray when you have the solar ray just find yourself a metal deposit like copper or emerald or whatever the case might be is and then mine it like you would mine with the terrain deformer as soon as you have and basically just continue the process so you have enough liquid sun as soon as you have enough liquid sun next in line is mordite mordite you can either again you can buy it sometimes or you can just go all john wayne and kill all some fauna and uh, get enough mordite with that so uh channel your inner john wick pull out some uh, some pistols or some blasters or some miners and kill yourself a couple of animals next we need some gold the easiest way to get gold again is either buy the gold or you just go into space and mine a couple of asteroids some asteroids of course are silver some are gold some are platinum you just find yourself an appropriate asteroid and uh, in, engage in some mining of course if you're in space you might do a, you might have the let's say opportunity to fight some pirates and they sometimes have gold but keep your eye out for gold nuggets because you might be able to unchannel some gold nuggets and get enough gold again we are just building our item we've got all our items built we go back to the monolith and have another conversation we now have the ingredient that they are requiring we then have a chat with them give them the ingredient and then they will give us another living item follow the same as with step one get the living item save the game exit the game do the whole time lapse or come back tomorrow the the longest wait is the 22 hours one and the shortest wait is 18 hours and a couple of minutes same process get it to be mature go back to space do a pulse and have the third chat with the host this one was one of the more fun steps for me to get the different items for the different re for the recipe that i'm going to get now we're having a chat with the monolith And as always, it requires something that we don't have. And of course, we say leave because we don't have the first item. It will give us the recipe. Same as step one and two. Step three and four is exactly the same. In this case, we need chromatic metal, an hypnotic eye, and living water. Chromatic metal is easy. You can just take one of the, your personal refiner and either emerald, iridium, cadmium, or copper. Or one of the activated ones and process it into the chromatic metal for the hypnotic eye you need to go underwater you will be given a location and you basically need to kill an abyssal horror but its eye needs to be open so just make sure you're close enough not like i did make sure you're slightly closer the eye opens up and then you kill it and then you have yourself an hypnotic eye the living water is quite cool after you get the eye just head back into space and you will see what i mean Look at that majestic creature. Not to worry, the creature basically just after a conversation and a sacrifice, it will be giving you the living water that you require. So just uh, step through the conversation and request the sacrifice. Luckily, it doesn't die. I thought it would die if it gives me the sacrifice and like disappear, but it just continues on with its life. Look at how majestic that space jellyfish is. That looks so awesome. Well, we are done with step three. We can now build our save the impossible membrane. Step four, same as step one, two, and three. We head back to the monolith. We give it the item that we have just built, and it will give us another fragile item. And again, we just follow the same process. Have a chat, do a time skip or a time wait, and head to the next step. The next step we have is again we just move up quickly into space we've got now three items we now need to do our fourth again pulse engine have a chat it always if the pulse engine doesn't work and you're waiting for i haven't i've never waited more than 15 seconds if it doesn't happen just do one uh, galaxy jump one hyperdrive jump not far just a neighboring a neighboring system 
then your pulse engine and then it will come back it will give you most likely location on your previous system but that's perfectly fine just don't jump far just jump close by like this we just needed to jump one left so jumped in the hyperdrive activated it and away we go we've arrived at our destination the fourth step in the system you're looking for a massive ring it's just a ring item basically you may have seen this item in your previous adventures but this is for your fourth but the steps are similar to steps one two and three you have a chat and as always you will get a recipe for something that you don't have yet we will need to build it in this case we'll need to build another item for our uh, tool our multi-tool basically and it is an animus beam now similar to a solar ray an animus beam is a converter in this case you just need to hunt living fauna with the animus beam now the animus beam is like solar like i said this the solar ray if you get enough if you kill fauna instead of getting more diet in this case you will get liquid something fragmented qualia not liquid fragmented qualia now it take, does take a little bit of time especially on the planet i was because there was not a lot of living animals around so it took you some time after that the next one is easy you just need some magnetized ferrite and for that you just grab ferrite dust to pure ferrite pure ferrite to magnetize ferrite until you have enough a nice and simple one a nice and simple one this one so we have our items we have built our third one all you now have to, well our fourth one rather all you have to do now is go back to the big circle the archive present your build and again same as always you'll be given a fourth item that is quite fragile same step as always all you need to do is need to singularity to grow so do the time lapse and come back when we've come back we need to pulse again in space in space it basically says now the creature we have everything we need we now need to give it a soul basically we've got the body we've got the skeleton we've got the nerves we've got everything like that we now need to give it a soul As you can see unconventional travel may be required and this is now where we need to do the portal now for the portal to work you need all the glyphs to get all the glyphs you can get the glyphs in one of two ways as you can see it's the hunter the spiral of reality the star over water that's all the glyph names basically have their own names i will help with that section as soon as we get to that but we now need to get all the glyphs to get all the lifts, there's one of two ways. The easiest way is to do the Artemis mission. As soon as you finish the Artemis mission, or if you have done it in the past, you already have all the glyphs. As soon as you finish the Artemis mission, you will have all 16 glyphs. You only need 12 for the address, but you'll have all 16 glyphs. The other way, which is slightly more pedantic, or slightly slower, but again, it's another way, is having a chat with a traveler on a space station not every space station has one but have a chat with them and they will point you towards their grave if you find their grave then you will f unlock a glyph and you just need to do that 16 times or at a minimum 12 if you're lucky to unlock all 12 all the correct glyphs but again i do think they unlock 1 to 16 and we do need the 16th glyph unfortunately so you'll probably need to unlock all of them so as you can see i'm just showing what to do with the traveler one chat to a traveler ask them where they come from and that is then the way to get their grave have a chat at their grave and then they'll give you basically the glyph as soon as you have the glyph repeat steps to get all 16 and then as soon as you have all 16 you can then find a portal now to find the portal again there's a couple of things a couple of ways you can do the portal just double check that you have all the glyphs you can go to your catalog and your knowledge and see that you have all 16 portal glyphs as you can see i have all 16 fantastic then to get a mo uh, to get a portal you can do two ways one you can either be in a vehicle have a strong enough 
uh, like a, an exocraft, there we go, have a strong enough uh, scanner and you can scan for planetary objects. The other way is you can go to a cartographer, grab a couple of alien cartographic data, data cartographic data, and you need to find a monolith. Now, of course, there's a couple of options that you can get with this list. You can either get an artifact or a monolith or things like that. And unfortunately, you can only have one at a time. See if the first one, you do get an ancient ruin, for example, like I did. You just need to go to the ruin, check it off, basically, and repeat the steps. That's why I buy usually about five maps. In this case, on my second attempt, I was lucky enough to find a monolith. Now, when you do find a monolith, just head towards it. And again, the important thing is to understand in what system you're in. Because if you are in a system that is Corvax, you need to be able to give it a Corvax item. If you're in a system that is Geg, you need to give it a Geg item. So a Geg Relic, a Corvax casing, or a Viking Dagger. You can usually buy them from ships in the bay or on the planetary trade post, as you saw earlier. In my case, I'm in a Viking system. So for me, I will have a Viking Dagger. When you have a chat with your with the monolith where you're there, you just need to make sure that you pass the test. Now, just make sure you save before, and of course you auto save when you climb out the vehicle. So pass the test. In this case, I had to stand back and not be greedy. When I'm not greedy, it basically gives me, oh, there we go. Congratulations, you have my happiness. Then the monolith will move out. Then you have a chat with the monolith for a second time. And that is when you make the offering. In my case, a Viking dagger to locate a portal. When you found your portal, easy enough, just jump in and head towards it. When you're landing at the portal, this is going to feel a lot like Stargate. If you've watched Stargate previously and you've never used one of the portals, you will need to basically charge all 16 portals. When you're at the portal, they have different charges, either cobalt or oxygen or things like that. Just make sure to charge them all, or at least the ones that you require. And if you've charged them all, then you can enter the address as follows. And this section is quite a cool experience. You just activate the portal and enter the sequence. There is no time limit, so I did speed it up a little bit, but you can just pause the video if you want. But that is the address at the top there. You just match the address with mine, and then you get it. And don't be alarmed. Nice. Puddle has arrived. The event horizon, beautiful. All you need to do now is just step through. Don't worry about your ship. Your ship will be on the other side as soon as you land there. Welcome to one of the special planets. Those that you cannot necessarily reach other than by portal. You have a marker on your location. Again, jump in your ship and go towards your location. As mentioned previously, we now need to get it a soul base. The process is very similar to process getting the four items. You land at an approximate location, you head towards a building. In this case, we need to find a soul chamber, basically that's empty, and then we'll need to fill the empty soul chamber. So, nice and simple, just follow the prompts on screen, don't fight any of the aliens or you might die, which is not ideal of course. Get yourself an empty soul vessel, and then a soul chamber, there we go, and then con proceed to fill it. The process is the same to fill it. You need three souls, basically, three graves. So you will get markings on your hut for three graves. Just jump in your ship and head towards all three. Luckily for this, the landing is usually quite close to the souls. So you don't need to venture far off to get the approximate location, usually within 150 units. You get your three souls and then you have a full chamber and we can move to the next step.
as soon as you have a full chamber the next step is just to go back to the portal and step back through nothing else is required as soon as you are on the other side make sure to jump back in your ship that is the key to proceed there you shouldn't be waiting for anything else just jump back in your ship as soon as you jump in your ship you get a communication if this does not happen just follow the same steps go back in the portal go back to the other planet come back and the same step should happen that sometimes glitches out just go back in the portal and come back that usually fixes it now in your as soon as you're in the ship it gives you a location towards the fallen host and that ladies and gentlemen is where you will find your living ship congratulations on getting a living ship just look how beautiful it is it is absolutely fantastic now if a mechanical ship is there a normal ship do not interact with the ship you just save because you climbed out of your ship just reload the map the the the, the game without interacting with the mechanical ship and it should solve it so just reload it should be perfectly fine don't interact with the mechanical ship it is one of the bugs so what you only do here is you just add all the items after you've added all the items basically it then says congratulations you have a living ship it is of course s tier now you can either you can of course compare it you can either claim it immediately or you can just swap ships your choice I always claim a ship and then I just jump in the new one because the old one will just respawn for me at my home. Jump in, fly around a bit. I do love the HUD. It is just beautiful. I do like the names and the look of it. Each living ship has a slightly different design. The color scheme is slightly different. It is absolutely beautiful. And that ladies and gentlemen is that. You now have your own living ship. To do any upgrades, all you need to do is get a couple of void eggs again and follow a similar process and you will unlock upgrades for your ship. And that's that. Thank you very much for joining me. Do have a wonderful day and enjoy your flying around with your living ship. If you have any queries or comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. It always helps out with the videos. And if you need any more video ideas, if you have any more video ideas, please leave them down below. And uh, as always, good luck, have fun.